Okay, so we're back to the chillers. Um, again, just kind of uh, thinking about these as basic systems and how you think about them. Typical chiller has a hot condenser barrel, a cold evaporator barrel, and something else. What's the other thing? Uh, so, all right, we talked about how um, as a barrel, for some reason they were on their sides. I, whenever you say barrel, I always think they should be standing upright, but in fact, they're on their sides usually. Uh, so it's this big box, and in this big box, uh, I've got kind of a coilish thing happening there, and then a coilish thing happening there. And that's the refrigerant loop. So this is a pipe filled with refrigerant. And we're going to have um, a uh, compressor right down here and an evaporator right up here. Um, they're probably not actually in that location. They're slightly different. Like the, the actual design of these things is a little odd. Um, but you get the gist of it, I think, from this. Uh, and that uh, compressor is going to compress that material, that refrigerant material, and make this very hot. So it's the same refrigerant material in this pipe, but now it's very hot. Uh, and that's, we know that's going to be the case because there's a relationship between pressure and temperature. Uh, and then uh, at this evaporator, we're going to let the pressure off, and this refrigerant, same refrigerant is now very cool as it goes through this coil. So nothing has changed except for the pressure, and because of the pressure, it's changing the temperature, but it's the same refrigerant. We haven't let any in, let any out, and it just goes back and forth in this process. And so that compressor makes that refrigerant hot, the evaporator makes it cool, it makes it hot again, it makes it cool again, and it just keeps moving back and forth. So this cold barrel over here has cool water in it. So this is cool water. And that cool water, while being cool, is still warmer than the cold refrigerant after it's gone through the evaporator. So what's going to happen? Well, the warmer body is always going to be giving its heat to the cooler body. So even though it's cool water, it's still warmer than the refrigerant, and it's giving its heat to that refrigerant. That refrigerant then comes down over to here, gets to the uh, uh, condenser, that refrigerant becomes very hot because now it's been condensed and we, this is a relationship between the temperature and this pressure. Uh, and so now it's very hot refrigerant. It still has taken on the, the heat from that cool barrel. It's pulled as much of the heat as it can from that because it was colder than that cool barrel when it went through. But now it's much hotter. And we have the hot barrel on this side, hot-ish barrel, I should say, I guess. Um, and this hot water on this, in this barrel is not as hot as the hot refrigerant. So the hot body is always going to be giving its heat to the cool body. In this case, the hot-ish water, let's say ish there, uh, the hot-ish water in that barrel is going to be cooler than the hot refrigerant. And so the refrigerant is giving its heat into that hot barrel of water. So effectively, we are doing this very complicated process in order to take a little bit of heat out of the cool side and give it to the hot side. So in that process, uh, we are moving heat from one side to the other, and then we get rid of that heat through that heat rejection loop up in the cooling tower, uh, and then we bring what we need back into that element so we can get it very hot, it gets up, we get rid of it into the cooling tower, we bring it back to get hot again, gets up, gets rid of it in the cooling tower, uh, and then the chilled side, we have the chilled water loop going on, and that goes out uh, into the various air handling units. When it's been used in those coils, it then comes back. So it's losing that coolness, if you will, to the air. So we're giving the coolness that we've just created here to the air so that when it blows into the space, we get air conditioning. Uh, but then that, uh, the water in that pipe isn't as cool anymore. So it's coming back. It's still cool-ish but it's not uh, as cold as it was, it's not as chilled as it was, so it's coming back. It's essentially bringing the heat of the room where the people are, where the air handling stuff is happening. So there's the people doing whatever they do, uh, 
and the air is blowing around them and the heat from them is being given to the chilled water pipe in that coil uh, and then that coil is bringing that heat back down to this barrel and then it's giving that heat to the cool side of the refrigerant which is then getting compressed and giving that same heat off to the hot side of the refrigerant which then sends that heat up to the cooling tower and eventually sends it outside. So, all right, we've got all that stuff going on. So if we have a uh, hot condenser boil, uh, barrel, excuse me, uh, and a uh, cool uh, evaporator barrel, what else do we have? We have the refrigerant loop. So I think the potential answers here are refrigerant, because uh, I think that's a reasonable uh, answer. Um, you could say a refrigerant loop, a refrigerant system, uh, any, anything revolving around refrigerant would have been a correct answer in this scenario. Um, so uh, one question came in, which is talking about uh, compressors versus condensers. Um, the, the process of um, a condenser is essentially a compressor uh, in a slightly remote scenario. So like if your, your house has a condenser unit, um, that's where the refrigerant literally goes outside so that it's doing its heat rejection uh, directly right there. Um, the compressor is the thing that's actually in the device uh, compressing the, the uh, refrigerant. Uh, so they're similar, they're all part of one, one kind of system, but they're, they're slightly different terminology. Uh, one of the interesting things about this is people often wonder why uh, air conditioning is so expensive. Uh, and you know, the assumption is always, well, we've got a lot of fans all over the place. Um, must be the fans. Actually, the fans are relatively cheap, relatively small amount of energy. The big, big issue is compressing all that uh, refrigerant into the uh, uh, into that system. That's where huge amounts of the dollars and energy goes. Shamilia is asking, uh, would compressor be a good answer too? Yeah, yeah, that would, that would also be a, a potentially good answer. Um, uh, I think anything that's likely to be actually in that system, so the expansion valves, um, uh, the, even the coils would be potentially a good answer. Um, one of the things I, I should quickly say here, um, just I don't want to get too uh, too detailed on this, but the actual water in the barrel is probably not the water that gets sent uh, out through the chilled water loop. The chilled water loop would have its own coil kind of right next to it. So the barrel water is just a device to send the heat from one coil to the other. Uh, and the same thing would be true on this other side. So it's actually two sets of, of coils uh, in each barrel, um, the refrigerant coil and the other one. <laughs>